she's a pro-life singer who made quite a splash at this year's Grammy Awards. Her new album rocketed to the top of the charts. She hand-painted her own sonogram of a baby she gave up for adoption onto a wedding dress and wore it proudly on the red carpet at the Grammys. Her purse read, Choose Life. And now we're joined by the recording artist from New York. Welcome to the program, Joy. Thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell me why you decided to share your pro-life views in the form of fashion for the Grammys in such a big way. Well, for me, the red carpet is something I use for my value system. I decided that, you know, I really want to be an activist for the things I hold dear, and I am proudly pro-life. I am a woman who is not ashamed to talk about that. I've had a personal experience with it, and I really wanted to share love and choosing life over death, and I think it needs to be talked about a lot more. What do you say to critics who say you just wanted publicity because you're a singer? Well, I would say, first of all, everyone wants publicity when they are a singer, so that's not <laughs> untrue. That is true. Okay. <laughs> that's what the red carpet is for. <laughs> but um, I'd like to use the publicity for something positive, which is why I, choose, uh, I chose a positive message this time at the Grammys. I wanted to showcase love. I, I chose a personal message. And I really wanted to bring light to something that's not talked about. We never see pro-life issues never. talked about. And it really I is know. an issue. And it's something that's important. I did a, a commentary on just that after the Grammys when I saw you go by. And it actually was picked up by some media. You referenced your life experience oh, that led you to defend the unborn. Uh, tell us a little bit yes. more about that. About 10 years ago, I found myself unwed in, in an abusive relationship that was really hard. Um, uh, the father of my child, I actually, I found myself pregnant and the father descended into drug abuse and physical abuse. So I knew I had to get out of there. I went to the doctors to get the pregnancy test when I thought I was pregnant. And the nurse told me I should get an abortion. She told me flat out, you are too young to be pregnant. I just turned 20. She said, you need to get an abortion. It's the, it's the answer. It'll make it all go away. It's easy. There was a lot of pressure. We can do it now. It's free. And I walked out of there crying because I knew that that baby's life deserved to be lived. And I knew that that child needed to have a second chance at life or a first chance at life. So I chose adoption and I adopted my baby out to a beautiful, loving family. It's an, an open adoption. So I get to see her. I get to know her. She calls me Mama Joy. And for wow. me, it was a celebration of life in a situation that was really a crisis and something really hard. Well, and that's why I encourage women to do that, to choose life and to look at other options besides um, death, like abortion. And you have a, an album called Home Sweet Home that is number two on right. Amazon. And do you tell us about that? That's do you right. reflect your views in there? Home Sweet Home is an album. It's a new EP. It's getting a lot of great success. I, it's, it reflects my American values because America is my home sweet home. I've traveled 35 countries. I love being here. I love the rights, the freedoms we have, and um, to voice our opinions, to voice our views. And so it's really a celebration of that. And you'll see a lot of my, my political stance, but also my personal stance. Sure. Because truly being pro pro-life is a personal issue. I don't think it should be political. I think it should be looked at as something very personal and something done in love and not in judgment. You're a political conservative and a big supporter of President Trump. You wore a Make America right. Great Again dress at last year's Grammy. What kind of reaction yep. do you get in the music industry to your views? Well, I get a lot of hate. I'll be honest with you. If I didn't say that, it would I'd be disingenuous. But I get a lot of negativity. Um, it becomes kind of hard to read comments sometimes online. Um, I get people who say really nasty things even to my face. I get death threats. And really, it shows the hypocrisy of the other side because here I am, a woman, a strong woman, a woman of color, conservative woman, who is sharing my beliefs and what my value system is and what I believe to be right, but yet they try to shut me down. So I was at the One Life March, the Pro-Life March in Los Angeles, and it coincided with the Women's March. And I would tell you, the people out there were so nasty. They were screaming and yelling. And there was a lot of men screaming at me saying, it is not your body. You don't get to decide. And I thought, it's not your body either. Would I actually you? told that to him. And I said, but I love you. And we ended up actually, you know, having a productive you know, conversation. Bumping. Right. 
Yes, absolutely. There's not enough conversations going on. So many of my friends and peers in the music industry, I talk to them like humans. And some of them love me because they can't help but love me. And some of them still hate me. But that's, that's the price you pay for being bold. And I'm not going to stop. Joy Villa, recording artist, thank you so much for sharing your views with us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. God bless you guys. Thank you.